is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony hunting new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 hyundai venue courtesy of jack g and Volvo hyundai in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are in this one today because there are some nice changes for the 2024 model year this particular suv actually starts at under twenty thousand dollars as well which of course is a rarity these days you do get america's best warranty of course being five years sixty thousand mile bumper to bumper ten years one hundred thousand miles on the powertrain and you also get three years or thirty six thousand miles of complimentary maintenance as well so that's going to save you some money there too but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and size so you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 venue first one being the se starting at nineteen thousand eight hundred dollars under 20k like i said sel which is the one we we're in today starting at twenty one thousand eight hundred dollars still relatively affordable there and the limited going for twenty three thousand and fifty dollars but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the venue is going to be the same powering the little beast is a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out a 121 horsepower at 6300 rpm 113 pound feet of torque coming in at 4500 rpm that power being sent to the front wheels through a cvt 0 to 60 time approximately 8.8 .8 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 29 the city 33 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the venue I did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's a circular dial located directly behind the shifter by the way the drive modes are for the sel and limited trim level only so you won't get them on the bottom trim but they will include normal sport and snow because it is snowing out today it's very snowy today in pa but ultimately adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity and so now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see if we get any traction and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right let's do a downhill uh, acceleration here in three two one go <laughs> control <laughs> that's not bad there's a little too much snow for me to really go all out today but yeah it's okay i mean it's not the quickest thing in the world i was going downhill so i cheated a little bit but it's okay like i like i said i can't really push it too much because there is still snow on the ground it's 19 degrees out so it's not the best climate for that kind of thing but I do love that there's a snow driving mode, let me just say that. And there is a noticeable difference in the steering feel and the uh, throttle response when you go ahead and put it in that sport driving mode like I just did, so I liked that as well. So just keep that in mind. If you're merging onto the highway and you know you need a little more get up and go, just go ahead and throw it in that sport driving mode and that should get the job done for you. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So this is important because the braking configuration is actually going to differ between the trim levels. So for the SE trim level, you're actually going to get front disc rear drum brakes however for the sel unlimited trims you will find four wheel disc brakes so it's going to be a big difference there but i will say for the four wheel disc brakes you actually do get a 60 zero stopping distance of only 112 feet that's like better than a sports sedan. So typically what I say with SUVs like this, you typically find mid 120s, if not the 130s. So sports sedans you usually find in the one teens, like 115, 116, a lot of Mercedes will give you that. So 112 feet, that's insane. And I can tell you guys, I've already tested the braking feel, even in the snow right now. Let me go ahead and test it in the snow. That's fine. I mean, it, it's, not, <laughs> it's not the best. The ABS kicked in, of course, but it is perfectly fine the braking feel does definitely bite when you're on uh not snow so <laughs> absolutely no issues there i really honestly 112 feet that's a brilliant number and the braking feel off of snow is quite brilliant but anyways to go along with that touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back coupled torsen beam rear axle gas pressurized shock absorbers of course as far as ride quality goes it's actually been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today so absolutely no issues there as far as steering feel goes it is a noticeable difference depending upon the drive mode that you put it in so let me go ahead and say that right there so it's a much heavier weight to the steering when you put it in that sport driving mode so i think you guys could probably figure that one out but as far as cab noise goes as we are cruising 
cruising over the snow right now. It's always super quiet when you're driving over snow. So there's a whole lot of cabin noise right now. You do get a little bit of road noise at highway speeds, but that's to be expected in a vehicle like this. But honestly, it wouldn't bother me. So it shouldn't bother you either. But then touching our rear visibility as the snow is just starting to melt on my rear view window there. I honestly, I can see perfectly fine out the back and because of the more boxier shape of the venue, you really shouldn't have any issues there either. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior in the snow of this 2024 Hyundai Venue. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2024 Hyundai Venue finished in intense blue. Intense like the sub-frigid temperatures that we have out here today. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter K, indicating that the Venue is built and assembled in Korea, South Korea, of course. So definitely love that. But as always, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Black front grille will come standard on the SE. You're going to get some chrome bars, as you guys can currently see, on the SEL and limited trim levels. I love that look. It looks good. Projector style halogen headlights to the sides for the SE and SEL trim levels. However, you will get LED headlights with LED daytime running lights for the limited. So you gotta love that little extra illumination with the limited trim level at least. Automatic feature of course coming with that automatic high beams as well. And you will find a body colored front lip with some silver accents for the limited trim. Otherwise you're gonna get what you guys are currently looking at right now. But we've seen this look before. I like it and just another little side note in case you're not familiar with Hyundai they put the headlights down below daytime running lights are on top in case you're curious but that about rounds out the front end of the venue let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so but now since we are around to the side of this one silver roof rails coming on the SEL and limited trim levels you will find a two-toned exterior with a white roof for the limited trim level only you're going to get some black window surrounds for all trim levels body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard you're going to get the roof color side mirrors meaning the white for the limited trim level though so that's pretty cool integrated turret signals found in that front fender i think that's pretty cool it's kind of a jdm look i guess you can call it kdm though since this one's made in korea but then take a look down at the wheel setup 15 inch alloys for the se 17 inch alloys then for the sel and limited i actually do like the look of these wheels they look pretty darn good but anyways pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so but now since we are around to the back of the venue rear spoiler of course you kind of had a high mount stop lamp just below that rear window wiper back there love that led tail lights for the limited trim level only otherwise you're going to get halogen bulbs and there is a single exhaust outlet tucked away underneath of it all so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the venue here, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a manual tailgate, so simply just lift up on the tailgate itself, and it's obviously going to open up for you. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 18.7 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, so the rear seats do fold down, so it's quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. Rear cargo cover is going to come standard on all trim levels, so you gotta love that. Gonna find some cargo lighting back there, there's a grocery bag hook, there's some tie-down anchors, and if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire, which you guys know I absolutely love. But so then making our way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 34.3 inches. For reference, I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the back there. USB charging ports though, for the SEL and limited trim levels. That is new for 2024. So I wanted to emphasize that right there. No rear ventilation, unfortunately, and no rear center armrest either, but it's all good. But now let's go ahead and make our way up to the front seats manual adjustable seats coming for all trim levels across the board cloth seating for the se and sel but then for the limited you're going to get a cloth slash leatherette combination so we don't have that unfortunately but heated front seats for the limited trim level only i would have loved to have had those in this test drive here today but again it's all good as far as seat comfort goes it's actually been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today so i haven't had any issues there so it's fine for me. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It will be leather wrapped fin for the SEL and limited trim. So I did like that. Then making our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key here. You do have uh, your Hyundai logo covered by this sticker here on the one side, but then when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and that hold button, that is gonna be a remote start. Love seeing that, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start for the SEL 
and limited trim level. So that's actually new for the 2024 model year for the SEL trim level at least. So previously that was a key start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot in the brake and press that engine start button. Cool color, kind of blends in with the rest of the car, but uh, just locate it by the driver's right knee there. And so once started up, these gauges are stinking cool, man. Full digital gauge cluster, speedometer is on your left, tachometer is on your right. I absolutely love it. I think it's one of the coolest looking gauge clusters at this price point, I'll put it that way, because also when you change to drive mode, so normal's gonna be blue, but when you change it to sport, it's gonna be a bunch of like red orange hues and uh, snow is obviously gonna be blue as well, but it's a cool little setup there. I like it. Of course, it gives you how many miles you have left until you hit empty. It gives you 18 degrees out, so it gives you the outside temperature, but what it doesn't tell you is it feels like four degrees out, which is what that weather app says because of the wind. It's crazy, but anyway, Anyways, that gauge cluster, like I said, it's amazing. I actually love it, especially at this price point. And so, but now making our way to overall interior quality, you're gonna find a power sunroof for the SEL trim level only, oddly enough, so I do love that. A dual zone climate control for the SEL limited trim, so both uh, driver and passenger can set their own temperatures there. Wireless phone charger for the limited trim level only. Dual USB charging ports for all trim levels across the board. Uh, just in front of the shift, you got a little bit of uh, storage there. It's not rubberized, it's plastic, but still it's there nonetheless. 12 volt power outlet, couple USB charging ports. Behind the shifter, you got a couple cup holders and within the center armrest, it's actually a decent amount of storage for what this vehicle is. I do like the little ledge found just above the passenger side glove box too. Again, it's not rubberized, so things might slide around a little bit, but it's still there, nice little storage area there. I do like that the door handles aren't also a black plastic, which most other competition would probably do there. So it's actually finished in silver, so that looks good too. So overall, for the price point of this vehicle, the interior quality actually isn't all that bad. I don't mind it, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. An eight inch color touchscreen display will come standard for all trim levels, Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but for the SE and SEL trims, you're gonna get wireless. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, so that is pretty cool. Factory navigation system coming on the limited trim level only, a voice memo system, you can find that up there as well, along with your radio information. And so, six speakers is going to come standard for all trim levels across the board. And then that that's actually newly standard for the 2024 SE that didn't used to get six speakers, so I do like that. But anyways, of course we have that six speaker sound system because it's the only one available. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning and Let's test out the clarity of this one. It's okay. It's actually not bad for a six speaker sound system. Not the best six speaker sound system, but it's not bad. So like the bass was pretty good. Clarity, you can kind of tell it's a six speaker sound system, but the bass was actually above average. So it's an okay sound system. I'll just put it that way. But last thing I want to mention you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the venue in reverse, you will find a rear view camera giving you a beautiful view of the snow, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so let me start by saying IIHS top safety pick for the limited trim level only. Why you might ask? Because that's the trim that gives you the LED headlights. That's why it goes that way. But front side side current airbags do come standard in the back. You're going to have latch, AKA lower angers and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard for collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, lane keep assist, driver attention warning system as well. Then if you were to go with the SEL or limited, you're going to add to that a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, let me just start by saying this is a pretty darn good value. Why? Because you get America's best warranty. So the powertrain, things like the transmission and the engine and the dry shaft, that's covered for 10 years or 100,000 miles. So you gotta love that. But you also get three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. So again, incredible value because this is an excellent starting price point. Even the SEL is very affordable, but you can get this venue for under $20,000. So that's pretty darn cool as well. Also love that wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay comes on this one. I also love the digital gauge cluster. That's something you don't always find on this particular segment. I think the only other one I can think of is the Volkswagen Taos. Also gives you a digital gauge cluster, but these two, the Venue and the Taos, I think those are the only two, and they both look absolutely amazing, honestly. The only constructive criticism that I got for this one, because we are sitting in a heck of a lot of snow that we always get here in Pennsylvania, is it would be nice, at least, to have the availability 
of an all-wheel drive system. It doesn't have to come standard because I get that front wheel drive needs to come standard because it's a better price point, but at least have the availability for all wheel drive because I could have definitely needed it today. Although this thing held up like a champ, I will say that, so no issues, but I'm used to driving in the snow. But anyways, that about rounds out this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on Facebook at the bottom of the screen because I've been posting a lot of cool behind the scenes shots if you guys are into that kind of thing. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.